So what we would really love to hear are any questions that you have for the cast, um, approaching character. Um, we are representing the designers here, so if you have any design questions, um, we probably could address them. And Mario and Alan are both here. The musicians have stayed. So if you have any questions at all, we would love to entertain them. Uh, hi. It was wonderful, first of all. But I was curious about, I noted that there was some romance between Ariel and Prospero, at least suggested at one point, and maybe that wasn't it exactly, but she said, I love you. And at another time when um, she was leaving, she said, I'm going, I'm going, almost to try and get his attention or something. So I wonder if you could talk about that or interpret their relationship a little more. Brian? <laughs> oh, I start. Um, I think as an airy spirit, I have an, a fascination with human emotion. I have found that in the text, this character has a lot of playfulness and humor, and so I think this this creature has a, has a sense of love, but it's detached because there is no real physicality to it. So that was my interpretation of, and even the curiosity about, do you love me? Is that what we have going on here? Because I don't really, uh, I think this creature doesn't necessarily understand what humans call love compared to the sense of being that, a, that an airy spirit has. Not to avoid your question. But, um, but I don't think that, that Ariel experiences human, human emotion or human love in the same way that Prospero does. Actually, in, in the, the making, in the rehearsal process, we had toyed with the idea that, okay, if an airy spirit materialized herself into some shape that would be recognizable for the human to see, what would that shape be? And we had toyed early, early, early on with the idea that Ariel represents Miranda's mother. It's, that's the face. That's the face that saves him. That's the face that helps him. That's the face that aids him in these 12 years. And that seemed like a right thing to do, but we, I don't think we ever did it, you know, much beyond uh, uh, just talking about it. So for Prospero, there probably is an element of human love, uh, not because of the, the, the conceit that I just talked about, but I think there just is something there's an admiration, there's, there's a feeling of awe and inspiration by this magnificent creature that can do all this, and yet he still has the, the wherewithal to chastise her early on and say, oh, come on, you, you're not, not going to give me one more day, you know, two more days, come on. And it, it, sound, you know, it sounded like, like a husband and wife sometimes, but uh, I think overall it's just the human, for, for my prospect, it's the human awe of something as magnificent as a rainbow or a, a valley or a waterfall, something in nature that you see that just takes your breath away. And that's the way I'm approaching it. The role is actually written, uh, Shakespeare gives Ariel's uh, he in, in the script, and it's often cast as a male or female. So the idea of, of any sort of love relationship with them has been explored and played with in countless productions I know of, but in ours we really did try to just make it uh, less of a romantic relationship but more of one of, of affection essentially coming from Prospero in a human sense which we experience and in Ariel's uh, an inquisitive curiosity. She's, she's, she, he is a very conceptual character so there's many ways to go with that that relationship? It's a great question. I know, I know I'm probably not supposed to ask questions, but as a uh, concept, um, how do you guys approach, um, this is particularly for Brian, um, when Prospero is giving up his power, do you, do you does it feel like it's an unburdening, or do you feel like it's a, a certain sadness in the character? For have him, he has his whole world in front of him, and he's kind of, how, do, how does that, as a play, and how is that uh, written into the I, script? I, th I think there, there, is, there is a sense of sadness, but there's also that, that relief, you know, the, when, when you have that 
burden of anger if you've been so mad at somebody and just uh, wanted to punch them, you know, ram their head through a wall, and then all of a sudden you come to the realization, no, that, that burden of anger, when that's lifted off your shoulders, I mean, everybody has experienced that at some time or another. And I think that's the start. I think by I, the, the little small symbol of handing Milan, Milan over to Miranda and knowing that it's going to be within that couple, that's another, another sense of loose. You're right, loosening. Taking the robe off and uh, giving my, uh, a thing that we wrangled over, giving the, the staff up to Caliban so that he rules the island. That, that's another. It's giving it all away and becoming back to being the person that you wanted to be. It's kind of, kind of the approach, and then it's topped off with that great speech at the end when it's just Brian the actor talking to you, the audience. You know, I, I think it's, I think through it all, we, we've kind of given him that, that release, that final thing of, God, it feels good to be human again. What is the um, significance of Antonio not saying anything after he's forgiven except that one line about possibly exploiting Caliban. Well, uh, it is, it's a challenge, uh, the fact that uh, Antonio doesn't have any lines really <laughs> toward the end of the show. Uh, so it's kind of all up to me as to whether, you know, do, do I storm off, uh, you know, and, and not forgive or, or not accept forgiveness or do I do I have a change of heart, you know, and, and well, uh, I, I feel that Antonio is very humbled by the, the power that he's been put under, but also by the act of forgiveness that, that's been uh, acted upon him. And it's, it's sort of stunning and, and heart-wrenching for Antonio, I think. And this moment of levity is a real relief to him at that moment, that, that these clowns have stumbled out, and, uh, and one of them is just this crazy monster. And it kind of resurrects the, the friendship between Antonio and Sebastian, for me anyway, that has been strained, that Sebastian's throwing, throwing something out to me, hey, look at these guys, what do you think of them? Oh, yeah, hey, aren't they great? You know, I, let's sell them when we get back to, to, the, to, to Milan, you know? So that's how I am, you know, coping with having that line at that moment. <laughs> I don't know if James wants to say anything about Antonio at the end of the play. Yeah, although it, it is one of those genuine moments of ambiguities where the text is, 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 is silent on that, and we're not sure how to read silence, whether silence is, is some kind of cooperation or whether silence is, is, is resistance. I mean, I, it's one of those, those signs that can be read either, either way. Um, and, and there are so many, I guess, things in the play that, 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 that hold forth that kind of ambiguity. Uh, the island itself uh, is, 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 is not being defined in any specific way. Gonzalo sees it one way, right? Gonzalo sees it as, as a place where their clothes are fresher. Uh, they, he sees it as a, pla he sees it as, as a place that, that holds all sorts of promise, a promise of a kind of utopian society where people are free from sovereignty. Um, and I, th I think that, that that the issues that characters are facing in the play, like like Sebastian, are the issues that are being are being brought up to the audience by the end of the play with Prospero's final lines, when he says, "It's you from crimes, as the audience would pardon be. Uh, let your indulgence set me free." And so, thereby, when we applaud, we are showing that we are giving him, forgiving him of what he's done, or forgiving the actors on stage for any. And this is, of course doesn't apply to the actors here tonight, but in other pro productions it might apply, um, th 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 whether or not we're willing to forgive them of, of, their, of, of their shortcomings, uh, is, is representative of whether or not uh, we as the audience want to accept grace and want to accept forgiveness for our own crimes. So I don't know if that addressed it directly, but I think that, that um, it, 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 it's, it's, you, it's almost, a, we have to choose something there, and, and because I'm feeling like an optimist, I'm really glad that, that he's accepted forgiveness in this one. 